Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. In today's show, we're answering your emails on cyber sex, sexual confidence, dating with SDIs, and dating women for the first time. Plus, do single girls really get the most orgasms? All this and more. Thanks for listening. I'm not typically the type who likes to be tied down, but there's one place I will make an exception, in the bedroom. Safe consensual bondage play as an entirely new dimension of excitement for millions of couples. And for more than 20 years, Sports Sheets has been the expert in holding them down. That's why I'm so excited they are now official sponsors of the podcast. And I can't wait to introduce you to their flagship product, the Underbed Restraint System. Quite simply, Sports Sheets Underbed Restraint System is a group of connected nylon straps that slide under your mattress, transforming any bed into a kinky playground in minutes. Simply slip your partner's hands and ankles into the soft, adjustable cuffs, and voila, you're hooked. And when you're done, tuck the loose straps under the mattress. It's your little secret. No headboard, no pesky holes in the wall, no drilling necessary. If you've been looking to spice things up, there's no better way to introduce yourself to safe and comfortable bondage play. Trust me, I've had mine set up for three years now, and it still gets plenty of use, if you know what I mean. Plus, there are three levels of restraint systems to choose from giving you the option to explore at your own pace. Just check them out on their site. Click on the Sports Sheets banner on my website or visit sportsheets.com. That's S-P-O-R-T-S-H-E-E-T-S dot com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 20% off your order. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, uh, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com mm. and um, subscribe to our podcast. We put everything at your fingertips. We make it so easy. You can subscribe to the newsletter, our social media, and most importantly, subscribe to the podcast. We love when you do that. Um, you can shop my store, uh, support our great sponsors, and of course, importantly, most importantly, I guess, check out the amazing content that we update every day on our site by my amazing team here. So I think you'd like it if you haven't ventured into the uh, sex with only world. So completely. Updates are important. You can't go back to the site and be stale. It's got to it's got to be fresh. It's fresh all the time. Yeah. Hi, Anderson. Hey, Speaking what's of fresh. Up, Am. How are you? You look fresh. Thanks. Fresh, Daddy. Like, like Can I call you Daddy? Hey, Daddy. You look so handsome, though. I Thank mean, you, you always do, but your hair. You just. Thank I don't you know, very you much. Seem happy. About thirty-five too uh, too hot, but I did, I did a drop about thirty-five pounds. But thanks. Dude, that's always going to be I got my winter show. coat on. It's not, I feel jiggly when I walk. You know how it is. No, you don't, actually. I, <laughs> dude, I've had the jiggle. You don't I have the wait. jiggle. No, I've no. gained weight. I definitely have. I go up, I go down. It happens. If, you We're know what? Being a new dad makes you fat. That's what they say. Yeah, because when he's eating, I'm eating, and he eats a lot. Right. Or he, you eat his... Oh, he's not even eating like the, the boring. The Holding yet. a baby and putting the ball in his mouth, and I can do it with one hand. I'm pretty good. But then I get bored, so I got a free hand, and that thing's shoveling food in my mouth. I got to right. stop. Right. Really? Yeah. So you're eating just like snack chips just to keep I'm past time? I'm trying to bond with the kid, you know? I figure like we'll eat together. Right. You know? Oh, okay. But he eats like every hour. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, he can't eat it. I'm not eating. He might be offended Right. Or and you I also like... get a little jealous because he looks so satisfied. He does this little thing where his fists <laughs> go like ball up and they like kind of come together on his chest. Like he is in, he's a boob hound. He's constantly on the wife's boob or right. on the bottle on my lap. And right. uh I've never seen a human being so sa- look so satisfied as my my right. newborn does when he's eating. 
Just like not a care in the world. Just right. absolute satisfaction. Oh my God, that's adorable. Six weeks, huh? Yes. God, I'm going to come visit him. Well, you look great. So Thank you. I, Thank and you, you seem happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm Showing right. us pictures of the baby at Disneyland. Like, you know, you oh seem like. Oh my God, damn, so typical, huh? Look at my baby. No, but like, I know you would actually make fun of someone like you I right now if it wasn't would. you. So. You guys, to, um, to be fair to me, you guys were asking <laughs> for the pictures. Right. Yeah, no, totally. Do I want to come? He's adorable. I, I'm going to visit. You want to come visit him? Yeah. You know that you've been saying that since he was born. Okay, but I was out of <laughs> town for the last. You're out of the forever. country, huh? I was out of the country. Well, are you gonna have some kind of like strange European diseases on you? I don't know if you should come to a newborn's house. I've had a little stomach issues in oh, Mexico, no. but they're gone. No, I'm better now. Really? Totally. Okay. I'm coming. Am I, I gave you a nice present, though, but am I bad that I haven't been there I yet? love Has the present. everybody been there? Does she like it, most yes. importantly? Yeah, yeah, she loves it. It was on the list, the registry. He likes it, most importantly. Yeah, you guys, she got me a bumper for the crib. All right, enough about Whatever that. that okay. Enough about the products of sex. sex. About, okay. Enough let's about what actually about... happens nine months later after right. sex. Let's talk about the actual act. Okay, let's talk about it. I agree. Well, um, it's good to see you. So, yeah, things have um things have been good. I was in Mexico, did a little vacation with some friends. Oh, that was just for you time that was me time oh, that was nice. not work time i did not work at all i didn't check email i had fun it was great it's really? been good around here really you did really yeah that no, doesn't really. sound like you i know really like hard? i barely i don't think i it, it was um did you get hammered i did no no what? usually we go to mexico and get hammered this is a group of friends i go with they go every year from san francisco and i haven't gone in a few years but I went this year, but we used to be just crazy. We get there like shots of tequila from the airport, right? Like, you know, can you pull over? We, we just be drinking the whole thing. But we're right. just, it wasn't like that this time. It was kind of more mellow. Um, but it was wonderfully. What, what part of Mexico? Sayulita. Where is that? I mean, it's outside of uh, Puerto Vallarta. You fly oh, okay. a little fishing right village. Out, yeah, yeah, you were rent saying houses. That. It was fun. Yeah, and it's um, safe, right? Not totally really. Safe. Probably well, not that safe. It was safe. That's why I drink when I go to Mexico. I'm worried. You know, really? I need, Dude, I need to really? Cut the no, edge, I right? just, you know what? Here's the thing. Take the I edge feel off. this is probably not a great thing, but I've never had that fear wherever I go. You are ultra gringo. I, I would be a little bit nervous if I was you. I tr- you when I was 25, I traveled around the world by myself. You look and very never got kidnappable. Scared. Very kidnappable. I do? Yes. No, but I'm tough. <laughs> I did I not get kidnapped. I, I did not get hurt. I don't know if you can really read the toughness. I did have a little swagger. rendezvous that I'm not sure that I really want to get into. The only one that knows is Eddie, who what? works for me. What? <sighs> I, I took a Latin lover because Eddie <gasps> Eddie recommended it before I left. So Eddie works for me. What did he just say? While you're down there, pick up a Latin lover. He said to me before I left, he said, Eddie, who's sitting here, he goes, yes. you know, you should be, hook up with the Latin guys. Like They're great lovers. And uh-huh. I never really thought about it. You've never like, dabbled? No. Really? No, no, no. No. Hmm. Not that way. And I go there, I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know. I just wasn't I feel like focused. for your job, you needed to do a full, co- like all... Colors of Benetton. Kind of like, right, like the United the Nations. Kind of like yeah. Stu- yeah, I agree. I, I should. I've done a lot. Don't get me wrong. I haven't just stuck to, like, United States territories. Right. But never with the guy, you know. I love from. this conversation I'm having where, like, you're, like, defending. Like, no, no, no. I, I've slept with a lot of dudes. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't I, worry. I've gotten bunch. around. I've gotten all, around. A lot of different colors you know and what? sizes. You know how people have maps on the wall of places they've traveled? Maybe mm-hmm. I should put a map on the wall of guys I've banged in which different countries. My dad actually was a uh, Your dad had that. And yeah, he was uh, in the Air Force, and he banged his way through Europe. He had a little uh, a map of Europe, and he would check off every country that he <laughs> that he had sex with oh. a woman in. And, and there's only two countries he didn't do: Spain because of all the Catholics, and one other I can't remember. He had that actually, like. Yeah, he would brag about it. Oh, as, I just as thought as it was, was an child. original idea, but now I don't want to do it. But no, he, didn't, he didn't have it on the wall. Like he had it folded <laughs> away somewhere. You need to have it on the wall with little pins. I know, but it's a fun story. I don't know if I really want to get into it now in this moment. Well, like the actual act. Well, because it's a kind of a funny story, and I d- wasn't even going to bring it up. But I, let's just say. Why aren't you going to bring it up? You got to bring it up at some point. Eddie, it's so hard to truncate it because I told Eddie the whole story. You're a, you're a storyteller. You, you talk to a storyteller. microphone. So, you can trunk it. Okay. I was there, and what we did was we decided it was going to be a really you know healthy trip. And I got to be honest with you, my best friend, I was mm. with my best friend, and she just got diagnosed with first stage breast cancer. Uh huh. She got checked, had a lump, put back, and so she's like having surgery, Not right? Not a very like sexy week. story. So Not far. a sexy story, no. but don't worry. It's going to get better. My point is, though, to a lot of women out there who don't get checked and don't get their mammograms all that, I just really hope that you all get checked and right. take care of yourself. So it actually encouraged me. I'm gonna, I've am i let it slip. I haven't gotten well, a mammogram. You- I'm going to go. So this trip was a little more mellow uh-huh. because she was there, and we're like, she's not drinking, and she's having surgery. That's the dark side of it. But no, it was more like we're going to get massages every day. We're going to run. We're going to be healthy. So here's what happened. It's a company in the fir- that has like a place on the beach. First day I had a massage. It was not good. Uh-huh. I'm very particular about my massages. Like, I want, like, deep. Like, I want shiatsu. Like, right. beat the crap out of me. Hurt me. I've mm-hmm. got tension. I've got pain. And the first day, this woman's like, eh, that kind of... A lot of people 
like that on vacation. They just want the soft. Well, they should ask. You like harder? Or you want right. it softer? So the next day, they're like, "Well, you." Ha- I made a massage appointment as well, but right. I'm like, I want it with a man. Uh-huh. So I got there and I saw the guy, and and he was there, and I was like, "Listen, it's got to be better this time, or I'm not going to do it." Like, I need deep. He's right. like, "Okay, okay." I'm like, "Listen, like, though, really, if it's not good, like, I said, just do 30 minutes." So I sit, th- I lay down, and he's like, starts to do this massage, and it's like, I'm like, "No," I'm like. And I kept showing him, like, not this with the hands, uh-huh. this harder, harder. Right. And then I'm lying there going, God. And he was like, st- I felt his anxiety uh-huh. of trying to get it right and understand massage, my body. Yes. And all of a sudden, I felt the angst and the pain of every man in the world trying to understand a woman's body. <laughs> and, like, how that, that anxiety, like, through my body, like, I want to figure out this woman because he knew that I was disappointed right. and he wanted to be the one. Because before I got in the massage, he goes, I will help you. I will do what you want. Uh-huh. I will do it. And I said, okay. So I could tell he was, like, really, like, I'm driven. And then all of a sudden, and then I got up, I said, no, that's not right. And then he kept struggling, and I felt the pain. It was kind of like that game. You know that game, Bang, Mary, Kill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, like, do you want to bang this person? Do you want to marry marry them, or do you want to kill them? them, So first, I wanted to kill him. Like, I hate this guy. He said he was going to do it. I'm leaving after 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, I just started breathing, Mm -hmm. and I started moving so he would kind of know what I want. And then all of a sudden. It was out. He, he got into this groove uh-huh. where he read my body and what I, it was like, I was like, oh, I hope he goes to that spot. And he did. Uh-huh. And then he got into it and touched me in this way that like things were releasing Intuition. from my body. Yeah. And I was like, Whew. I was breathing. You know, you're lying down. I was yeah. breathing hot air like a dragon right. out of my mouth. Because uh-huh. <sighs> it was like he knew how to touch me right. in a way that I'm like, how did he get this? Like, I don't know. I just, he got I just in tune. He got in tune with my body, yeah. and it was literally, the, and then all of a sudden I look up after like, I'm like dazed eyes, and uh-huh. I said, well, how much longer? He's like, I said, how long has it been? Because I was like in another world. And then the other thing is that what I've been working on a lot for myself is through all my somatica work I've right. been doing is like really getting out of, you know, my head, head and being yeah. my body. Out of being my body. Yes. So I kept thinking, and I going, okay, breathe, body, breathe. Like, what is, the, what am I feeling? What do I want? And trying to like rest into that and so it was a very like somatic in my brain going I don't think about anything here and so finally after like it seemed like it was a half hour he's like oh no it's been 45 minutes I'm almost done and then it turned out he gave me an hour and a half massage Mm -hmm. a half hour for free huh right Uh it it rocked my world and then in my brain afterwards I'm like did there was nothing sexual about it but I'm thinking did he always have both hands on you yes are you sure I'm positive okay what do you think he's I don't penis know. was dragging along. Free hand, and you're like moaning on the beach. I, I, I was literally moaning. I was like, <sighs> I was like, oh my god, it's so good. I was almost, da- I was passed out. I was so good. So I was, I was like, thank you. That was amazing. And um, I got up, I left to go back up to the house because our house is right in front of it. And I was joking with my friends. So I said to my friends, I'm like, you guys, Carlos, my new husband. Like I was joking. I'm like he knew my body. Like like crazy. I can't believe how amazing this massage was. It was like he read into my body, and it meant so much that like I think I could guide him, and I was able to receive. So then the next day I go down to the beach and I make another appointment. He's not there. And mm-hmm. I said, I'd like to make an appointment with Carlos. And they said, okay, you come down at three. Can we'll we change it to Enrique? I like Enrique. Enrique. Re- okay. So then I go at three. They're like, oh, sorry. He said four. I come down at four. Like, he said five. Ooh, Enrique is drinking Enrique's maybe. canceling. Yeah. So I go down at five. They're like, oh, he can't make it today. Oh, And I'm no. like, ah, so sad. But it's okay. I had this great experience. So I go down on the beach like eight o'clock at night. We're right in front of the beach. And right. I go down there just to walk. And he comes out of nowhere. Oh. Yeah. Was he on a horse? <laughs> in my brain, he was. <laughs> he was drinking a Corona. Uh huh. So cliche. Yeah. And I'm um, just walking, and he was like, "Hey." I'm like, "Hi." And he's like, "I'm like, what happened?" He's like, "I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I missed it today. I was so busy." He's that Italian. He said, <laughs> 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 he said, "I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry I let you down." And I said, "Yeah, it's okay. It was a great massage. I loved it." And we sat down on the beach. He said, "You're really beautiful." What? And he leaned over. Uh-huh. And okay, so I'm thinking to myself, another thing is that I feel like my sexual energy has been a little shut down mm-hmm. lately. I've not really. I always thought of myself as kind of a flirty, open person and right, I you've think you've been shut down a little bit and another closed thing, off through somatica I was thinking as well through my final course I, I'm just gonna be more open so I like looked at him and I was like because is this sexual is it not because how could he even know my body but then he looked at me he's like you're I said that was this amazing and he's like you like shiatsu he's like you don't like massage is that what accent was that <laughs> and then he you do not me, like massage and then he kissed me and he started like touching my face and it was really hot he's like meet me later in the square so we met in the square it's like old times. Yeah, we met in the square. Couldn't he be fired for this? This seems like it's, uh, it's crossing over all sorts of boundaries. I, well, that's why I hesitate to tell this story, but he was not inappropriate during my massage. Um, we had drinks, and he came. He's totally respectable and dressed and nice. And my friends came with me because they were like a little right. anxious about it. But yeah, concerned. turns out he's a tantric. He studies tantra. He studies uh, Chinese medicine. Oh, so he's that's very maybe why touched. he has that accent. Right. 
No, but he's very <laughs> into like you know the energy, and he could read my body. We talked a lot about it. He goes, "Well, you know about the PC muscles," and he was like really into like Kegel muscles, and we had a lot in common. Oh. Let's just say that. And then he asked to check your Kegel muscles to see how they're doing. Exactly. Or you and were bragging about them, we, and you're like, check um, it out. And then you, no, you clamped he brought off it up. Enrique. I was like, do you know that I've an iPhone app called Kegel Camp? And he didn't understand because English his place? wasn't great. We went back to the massage. So then he's like, well, let's. We oh, went to like no. a party on the beach with all his friends. And then we went back to the um, massage place on the beach. And we like cl- put the curtains down and he moved the tables oh, together. Oh, like a little cabana type thing? Yeah. We had sex on the beach. And uh-huh. he was very into my pleasure. And he was like, not about his pleasure. So he was the like most massaging incredible you. Incredible sex. With his penis, essentially. No. He kind wasn't. Because it's all about you, right? Literally. It was like oral. It was fingers. It was uh-huh. like, I've never had a guy in, in that I can remember. Be so attentive and understand my body like this. That makes sense, though, right? Because he's a, ma- a masseuse, so I don't even. Yeah, and he yeah. studies tantra. And he studies. Did he charge you afterwards? Because that'd no, be weird. No, no, we're, we're like we're in love. Oh, yeah? He didn't come oh, with me. No, um, but here's my point of the story: is that I feel like it, in some way, like my pilot lights back on. Good, you know, good, like good, it's good. been off and Re-ignited. I'm on. Re- yeah, nice. Do you find yourself hanging out a lot? No, Latin but it was just so random. And I know that sounds weird, but it was hot. How much do you think of it was because he was Latin and how much was because he was a masseuse? You know I think I mean? it's a lot. Of, I, I don't know if it was because it was, it was I was more open just to like just being open to things that I wouldn't have been open to. But also I think it's that he understands bodies. Are and you ever going to see this man again? Are you fr- Facebook friends with him? He told me I should come back. No, he doesn't have a phone. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, well, text me if you're not going to be there. He's uh-huh. like, I don't have a phone. Then he rode off on his horse and sunset. I don't even know, but what I'm saying is That's now good, it's Emma. all about sex again. Uh-huh. Okay. Like I'm dating, I'm doing things, I'm I'm excited. That's Do you want to go back? Are you already have you already looked into? Maybe I kind of back? was like maybe I should go back over Christmas. Yeah. He's like come back, and then I gave him my card and told him what I did. He's like, so should I call first or just come visit? I'm like, just just visit. You don't have a phone. Just show up. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It's it's I miss that a little bit. You know, I'm happily married and I'm I'm I'm. I'm not looking into the past uh, longingly, but when you first have like a new relationship and it gets physical like that, like how that person's completely on your mind all the time. Yeah. And it's not like you're in love. It's just like this new, like exciting new, thing. Right. Yeah. And so all week long, I ca- oh, here's the best part though. So I left, my friend stayed and I, I said goodbye to him. I was, oh, this was the night I was, oh, here's another thing. We fell asleep on the beach mm-hmm. till like 7 a.m. And I had to leave that morning. So we Sounds watched like the sunset. Hawk movie. We watched the sunrise together. <laughs> And then I said goodbye, and I was went back and packed and went to the airport. But I was saying goodbye to my friends, and I had my, I had sex with Emily, and all I got was this T-shirt mm-hmm. that I gave to my friend John, my ex-boyfriend who right. rented the house there. And John people like, wore that shirt. John's like, he's like, I'm bringing Enrique this T-shirt, and I was like, please don't. He's like, no, I'm totally because he's not wearing it. Right. I'm bringing him this T-shirt. I'm like, I don't know, he's gonna get the irony, but then it's also like, whatever. So it's funny. That's my story. It was a really good. Got the big lips on it, right? He's probably. It says I had off. sex with Emily, and all I got was his T-shirt, he's which you could be insulted. Off right into that shirt right now. Who knows if even? But I was really into him for about the twelve hours, you know, following. Well, good for you, Em. Thanks, you need Sonny. that. Yeah, yeah, I do. Things have been good since then. Uh, sex in the news. You got so me. You know what? That was my sex in the news, Anderson. Are you cool? I, I know you love that sex in the much. news. I liked. So it. I liked your news sex. Thank you. Yeah, your I'm new, a new woman. news sex story. Um, so let's get into some um, emails, but first let's give a shout out to our sponsors. So thanks everyone for supporting our sponsors. We love you. They love you. Everyone loves you. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. I love the Sex with Emily team. I mean, seriously, I am so lucky. I have the most talented staff and usually we're all laser focused. Unless someone brings up the topic of skincare, then all bets are off. It's not just the ladies either. Even Eddie has his own daily regimen he loves to talk about. We all have our own skincare routines, but the one thing we have in common is our love for Murad. Murad makes an amazing collection of products from doctor-developed anti-aging creams to shave lotions for men. We just can't get enough Murad, so you can imagine how pumped we were when they offered us a 25% discount. And by us... I mean all of us. For one week only, you can save 25% on everything Murad has to offer. That means 25% off their skin brightening serums, their acne fighting treatments, their razor burn lotions for men, even their anti-aging cream that will take years off your complexion. To get it on this deal, go to muradpodcast.com slash Emily. That's M-U-R-A-D p-o-d-c-a-s-t dot com slash emily and enter promo code podcast at checkout they'll even ship your order for free you're gonna love it okay 
emails. Okay, if you have a question you want me to answer on the show, that's amazing. It's really easy to submit your questions. You just go to sexwithemily.com. You click on Ask Emily, fill out the form, and hit the button. Submit. That's it. You can also leave me a voicemail, 818-ASK-SWE1 or 818-275-7931. Here's the other thing. You can also, now what we're doing is we're taking calls. Anderson, remember we did that a few weeks ago? That was so fun. I, I did it twice with you. And it twice. Was really fun. Yeah. yeah, so you can also just like check a box when you're filling out your question saying, yes, I would like to be called. And then um, Eddie here, will, uh, assistant producer, will call you and um, set Tell up you to have a Latin lover. That He'll was call you great. Up. Yeah, thank Eddie. Amazing. Latin lovers. I'll tell you other things, too. Um, okay. Hi, Emily. My fiancé and I love your show. He lives in Sydney, and I live in America. When we get together, the sex is amazing, but it's hard to keep things exciting when we're apart. Cyber sex, cyber sex was great at first, but it got boring really quickly. We're closing the gap and moving in together soon. But what can we do in the meantime so our cyber sex is amazing as he is? Help Fatima. Okay, Fatima, it sounds like you've got the cyber sex part down. I'm assuming you're like on Skype or, or FaceTime, which is awesome, but even that can get kind of rote. I understand. So ways to improve the sex part. You can start working on some things that, you know, maybe you want to do when you see him. So maybe you've been wanting to talk dirty. Maybe you've been wanting to role play. I think it'd be so fun if role play like makes you feel uncomfortable when you're like together. You could be like, okay, tonight... You know, I'm going to be the school girl and you come as my master and you can wear some sexy outfits, do a strip tease for him. Toys are awesome. You know, we've talked about like the sync by We Vibe, which just came out uh, a few months ago, S-Y-N-C. It's on our website. He can totally vibe you. Like he can control that vibrator while you are using it and he can be in charge of the motion. You know, it's Bluetooth. Right. So that's really hot. You can hold her. I can hold her hostage yeah like no more until you do this exactly yeah. no you can totally do that and he'd be like she'd be like more more no like right. say this say that say maybe that. he's got some families as well right i mean the thing that i love about this is like because you're not really t yes you're looking at each other but you're not really in the same room might be more comfortable to enhance some intimacy so it sounds like while you're doing the sex thing you might need some more like real connection so you could suggest one night you write out your bucket list like maybe there's some things you both want to try you can exchange those lists, maybe even try one of them while you're Skyping or cyber sexing. Um, you can watch porn together, masturbate together, mutual masturbation, which it sounds like what you've probably been doing. Um, but I'm thinking of hearing like you might want a little more intimacy. So you can send them some snail mail. People actually still do that, even though weren't we talking about the post office only as old people in it now, Anderson? I don't know if that was me. Yeah, it was, it was me? I was like, no one here can go to the post. Yeah, there's like yeah. no, but. Um, I hate yeah. the post office. I go I, way too often. It's terrible. I know my post lady. I, don't I know, like me it. too. Okay, I don't so send sexy him. photos. You know, you could actually mail him some photos. You could sex him, send nudes, totally Polaroids, emails to build the anticipation. Um, but, you know, you don't have to be like skipping the foreplay. Like, if you guys are just getting on and masturbate, like, you guys could start to tease each other throughout the day, just like I tell couples in, you know, who see each other every day. Mm -hmm. Got to keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. Just like your Facebook page. Exactly. Keep things fresh. Keep things fresh. Yeah. Um, you could set the mood as like it was going to be a date. Like you could kind of change the way your room looks like light candles and just wear something sexy and make it like it's an actual date. Maybe you guys eat dinner together. A I mean, energy talk. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. It's not just about like masturbating, hanging up. Don't just hang up actually though. Right after you both climax, you could stay on the phone for a while, wind down uh, like if you were cuddling because dude, right. let me tell you something. I was talking to producer Madison about this. I actually got in trouble once. Uh -huh. In trouble. I was dating a guy. We had phone sex. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I just hung up. Because I was like, I'm done. No I'm goodbye? Out. No, I was like, bye, I gotta like, go. Ah, ah, ah. And then he texted like, me, and he's like, can you call me back? And I'm like, I'm really tired right now. And I was. I was like, pass dick. Out. You're a dick. So anyway, comes to find that that really upset him. Uh -huh. And he felt like he needed more from me. And that I just left him hanging after our, um, and, I, and, I, and I apologize. Like, I was like, such a dude. I was like, I'm so tired. You, you were using him as a pee stick, and that's, that's rude. I know. So maybe it's nice to have a little aftercare, a little talking after. Yeah. I, yeah. What? I, I was, no, I just You don't. would never be that guy that, what? No, I would never be that guy. And I don't like being treated like, like you treated that guy either. It's <gasps> awful. It's very hurtful. Really? Huh? I don't like it. I've, it's, it's happened a few times. So when I realized I was being used just for uh No, I was uh, dating him. I know, but it sort felt, of. I, yeah, exactly. Sort <laughs> of. It was mostly about the sex with him. No, I wish. Uh, no, it was the phone sex was good. Um, hey, go, going back to this email, do you, well, kind of, 
jumping off from the email, do you think there? I I know there's got to be a couple who likes the Skype sex so much that that's how they even under the same roof. I bet they. There's a couple out there that goes in separate rooms and they do it that Maybe. way. Maybe. I think that'd be hot, actually. I think that's a, you know. It's safe. It is totally safe. Yeah. And it's kind of like what, what phone sex used to be when I used to tell couples, like, talk dirty to each other. I used to say, you know what? It's a great way for, for you to kind of talk about what you want, but mm-hmm. you're not really in the same room or face-to-face, so you don't have to face that kind of, like, rejection. So I feel, or, like, that kind of insecurity. So, yeah, I wonder if couples do that. I bet. Even if you're in the same city, but you can't see each other that night, get on the phone. And do you Skype a lot? Th- FaceTime more now, but do Could, you? Th- no, Why not are much. are they, like, watching me? There's, there's ways of, you know, nefarious guys uh, recording these things, too. So be careful, ladies. Well, I would only do it with, like, a... Someone I knew. Yeah, but that that someone you knew is going to be like an ex someone you knew one day. You know what I mean? I, all, all I know is that there's channels and there's no, sites and whatnot where they have all these poor girls who are just at the time doing it for their boyfriend, oh God, and now it's like you know being time. shown to strangers. No, I know. I had oh God. I had this woman. I talked to my friend's daughter the other day. She's like 20, and she's like, "What do you think about sending?" She's just online dating. Here's what's happening now. She's online dating. She's tint swiping. She's broke up with a guy after three years. And she's like, you know. Tint swiping. She goes, what do you think? Tinder swiping. Uh-huh. She's like, what do you think about um, sending naked, naked photos? And here's what's Should happening. I send my is a lot of guys send are, it? A lot of guys are like, send me a picture right. when you first meet them. And I'm like, oh, guess what happens after that, sweetie? Yeah. He looks at it and shows it to whoever's sitting next to him. Right. So, no, don't do that. Um, when they yeah. first start dating? Yeah, God, guys, kind they're so like forward a, nowadays. Oh, dude, they, oh, you know, it's such a. I know. It's, I tell my nieces too. I'm like, that's, that's the culture. I'm, it's it's very upsetting that I miss this. You know. Uh, you know how many guys say that to be like, I wish if I had Tinder, nah, I never I got I married. I think people are lucky they didn't have Tinder. And, and I'd be married. so much more like uh, worried because the worst thing for me when I was dating was like worried about uh, an innocent girl that I was just dating getting taken advantage of by other guys afterwards. You know what I mean? Like I was always like I was very protective, and there's a lot more of that going on nowadays. I think. You were protective because you broke up with them, but you still cared about them? Yeah, a lot of time, like, I, we'd break up, and then I'd be really, you know, worried about the next guy coming along. And you know what? I've learned about that, Ev. This is so interesting. Just recently, I came into a breakthrough. Tell me. I think what it was was I didn't respect them much, and I knew that they bugged me, and I pictured <gasps> other guys coming in and being bugged by them, but using them for sex. And that was my biggest fear, was Aww. them just being used. So That's kind of loving in a weird way. But yeah, it's a really weird, You're like, backhanded thing. I know that she's thing. annoying. It's like other she's guys annoying. Are and I dealt with it for a while, but that's why we broke up. But I could picture other guys coming and saying, yeah, she's annoying, but she's, at least she's hot, so I'll bang her. Yeah. And I hated that idea of them being taken advantage of like that. Oh, that's weird, really though. sweet. Kind of no, it's not weird. No, it, it, I could look at it in an ugly sense. All right. You all right. could. I could look at it in a way that it's actually in some way kind of like. Let's look at it that way then. I appreciate that. Thank Thanks, you. You're welcome. I'm trying to turn it around. Yeah. Okay. Dear Emily. I've been regularly sexually active since I was 17 years old. After getting out of a committed Little. relationship for a few months, I hooked up with an old friend with friends with benefits while visiting a city I used to live in. A few days after we hooked up, I began having symptoms relating to herpes. Ooh. Confirmed the diagnosis with my doctor, and I'm now the reluctant recipient of HSV2. After telling the woman that I got it from, she wanted nothing to do with me. Right now, I feel ashamed and incredibly alone. I feel like damaged goods and that my sex life is all but over. I understand that casual sex is not an option for me anymore, but I'm unsure where to go from here. The stigma against HSV is pretty strong. I'm terrified of dating again, only to open up about my condition and be rejected or ridiculed. What can I do to bring this up in a manner that fuels a discussion about my condition rather than a quick dismissal? Do you know of any reputable social networks or others in a similar situation. I love your podcast. I respect your advice. Please keep doing what you're doing. Regards, Will. Oh, Will. Will, Will, Will. Here's the good news, Will. There's a lot of good news, Will. You're going to like this, I think. Yeah. The good news is that everything you're feeling is exactly what you should be feeling and what everyone else feels like they're damaged goods, they're never going to have sex again, that casual sex is over, right. that no, you're... But there's a lot who don't feel that way because they're irresponsible dicks. True. So Will's a good guy. Will, you're a really good guy. Like you feel, you know, and you feel like you like you're like um, become a monk and join a monastery. Right. Better news: none of this is true. Right. None of this is true, Will. I know right now it feels like it's like this yeah. life sentence, which is true. You will have herpes for life. Right. You can but, always remember her that way. Yeah, you'll always remember that way. You know, send her card every year, anniversary yeah. of the herpes. But every here's the thing: um, 
You take a daily <laughs> suppressant. You, what'd you say? Just every time he has an outbreak. Because you don't have outbreaks very you often. Don't when you do have an outbreak, you just take that pill. What's it called? Yeah, Valtrex. Valtre- or Valtrex. Or there's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a few. Uh, I know others. it sounded like I have herps. I don't have herps, but I've, I've okay you know, dated do, people honey. who do. I've right. dated plenty of people. I've had you. unprotected sex with plenty of people who have, have, have exactly, the herps. Because they're Guess taking what? a daily I don't have the herps. Right. I don't have it. But uh, every time, you, just as, as a kind of a fuck you to her, uh, every time she, he gets an outbreak, he can be like, hey, your filth is on my dick again. How are you? No, let's no? not go that negative. Do that? No, 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 revenge? I don't. Uh, not okay. at all. Let's just let her go. She's, she's. you know what? She, <laughs> she, and she might be a silent uh, carrier. She might not even know, she and might she not, might just be knows? pissed at you. Like, I'm sorry that your old friend real left, whatever. It's not about her. It's about you right now. So here's the thing. It is not... It's not a death sentence not to your dating life and your sex life. It is not even a deal breaker. Don't even have to talk about you it, really. Don't. Well, well, you don't have to talk about it. Not on the first date. When it starts to get right, hot exactly. and heavy and you know that you guys are going to hook if up, you could say, listen, relationship. FYI, um, I have herpes. I, I've been diagnosed, H, you know, HSV. Herp, I say herpes. I take a daily suppressant. 99% effect, 99.9% effective or whatever it is 97 and then you're wearing a condom too right and you're wearing a condom yeah if you're wearing and a condom like, you just know educate what? them okay so madison your producer is reacting to all this because what? i i don't know i've never been in will's position but she's from what i'm sensing from her it's a really bad thing to wear a condom and be uh not having a breakout and have sex with a person without telling them she's is, is this true madison is this what you're kind of implying I actually oh you want to use my mic I actually just learned about something called, because I was researching this, and it's called um, shedding. And there are a couple times a year that people with herpes are like shedding their skin yeah. where they don't have a breakout, but they can still um, transmit to their partners. Like there's no sign of it. You have no idea, of, no way of tracking it, nothing. You just, no, I've heard you about have it. a breakout. You should always tell your partner whether you have a breakout, whether you're, it's under control and you haven't had one in two or three months. Condoms don't always protect you. Right. Unless it's on your shaft, a condom is not going to cover the surface area that would transmit from skin to skin. Usually it's the area like around your junk too. So you're saying if, if you're shedding on your Darcy tunic uh, that you could infect them? Yes. Yeah, you can. You, it's, you're right. It's still a risk. I don't get any points for Darcy tunic say- reference. No, but you're saying, but, but, but Madison, and she's right, because when you said you don't have to wear a condom, you absolutely have to wear a condom every yes, single time. Yes, you have time. to wear a condom. And what Madison's saying about shedding is, yes, there are risks. There are, there are a chance that you could be shedding, and you might not know it, and you could still, you know, you could still transmit to your partner. Okay, well There's a chance I, that I someone that you're with then. could be a carrier, and they might have it, and they don't know. So the truth is, it's it's more common than you think that people have it. You're doing the the what best you can, and like you're one being in honest. F- one in five. I want to say it's like well, I want to say it's. I know HPV. One in five. Everybody's got it, right? Like I want to say it's one in five. Can you look that up real quick? What it is now? So I yeah. was actually gonna, you know. So um. But here's what Will's up against is but like you got to tell. You do have to tell your partner. You, you so do. I think what Madison was saying is, that, and I would. You have to tell your partner. Yeah, especially if you care and about people them. People don't. And, but you are going to scare some people away. And the problem that Will's up against is in whatever Madison's about to find out, how many people have it. Uh, or Eddie most, can look it up. Most of those people are not. Uh, they don't even know. Some people don't know. They don't know. Or And I think that the majority of people, especially in their young 20s, aren't that. They're going to be like what I just said, which, you know, as long as you're wearing a condom and you're not having a breakout, you don't even have to talk to them about it. I was speaking on a turn. I've never actually had to go down this road to figure it out. But yeah, it's just the right thing to do, and it'll get easier over time. You're 20 years old. And, There's dating and forms too, or it's just. Well, the, just, it's, well, he also asked, like, if, are there sites for people, you know, dating with herpes? It appears that the best ones is Hift and Hope, H I F T. Herpes Cupid. There's another one called Positive Singles for people with any STD. Um, That's but a dangerous dating pool. AIDS is in there, right? I, I, dude, I didn't check. I don't know. Jeez. Well, you can probably sort by STD, okay? Okay, one in one five. five. Yeah, that's what I Nailed thought. Ninety percent of those with herpes are unaware that they have. Ninety yeah, percent. This is what I'm know. saying: is that like people could have it, you don't know, you can't trace it. Take the daily suppressant, or your doctor might recommend that you take it when you're having breakouts. But you're going to be fine. Your sex life is not over. Be honest with people. I've had guys be like, "I have herpes." I'm like, "Okay, I take the present. I've had sex with them." And you can I'm always totally lead fine. with, uh, "Honey, I have something very important to tell you. I don't have HIV, but I do have the herpes." Right. No, and here's the other thing. Here's how you also have the conversation is that you need to educate yourself as well, like with all these stats we're telling you and what the chances are of transmission because you don't want to be like, we need to talk and make it this super serious, like dark thing. But it's like, listen, I have herpes. 
this is what I do for it, and I just want you to know. Yeah, it's all about the delivery. You can actually it do it in a really delivery. sweet way. You can actually use this to your advantage in yep. some ways if the if the girl's receptive and say, look, I really care about you, and I, I really, really like you, and I and I want to take it to the next step. I actually could even open a door yeah. for talking about sex Absolutely. Uh, in a very caring way and say, I just want to let you know that if, if we go there, I would like you to know that I got the, uh, I'm not, I don't have a breakout right now, right. but uh, I have seen them in the past. I know what to do. Take and maybe a lot of people have one breakout and they never have breakouts Never again. again. Yeah. Right. So anyway, just don't look at yourself as an outcast, sweetie. I, I know so many people who are in this phase. He just got diagnosed and this happens. It's like a so. pimple, right? Yeah, it's like a pimple. It can itch. It can be like a rash. I mean, I've seen it on people's faces. I've never actually seen it on their jennies. Yeah. I've, you I've, Google it. I've seen, well, I, I, That's I, a good time. I know you can. Or don't. I'd rather not. Yeah. But like, I see it on lips a lot because, you know, there are people like the, on your face. Because those are out in public. Right. Because I don't live in Saudi Arabia. So I see, you know, girls' lips with the herpes. <laughs> you do not. Live, right. Exactly. And guys have, too, like a pimple. BTW. By the way, uh, I've not seen a whole lot of dudes. Usually it's the, the girls with the, the lip well, You're herpes. probably not looking at your guy friend's lips. Maybe I'm not, you know, inspecting their lips. Um, so I, I think what you girls do is you try and cover it up with a lot of makeup, which makes it even more uh, noticeable I don't sometimes. Know. I don't have them. Caked it. Yeah. I'm free. But... Uh yeah, so sweetie, uh yeah, so check out those sites, but and you're gonna get prac, you're gonna have practice over this, and it's 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 you're gonna be fine. I know that you're a good guy, and well, that you you're care. twenty, so by the time you're thirty, everyone will have it. So you know, no, I really hope that's not the case, but let's be honest. Okay, so another email. Uh, hello, Emily. My name is Monica. I'm 25 from Los Angeles. First off, I just want to say I love your show. I listen to it every morning on the way to work and on the way back. I love the thought of people sitting in traffic listening mm-hmm. to sex with Emily. It makes it better. I need some advice. I recently got into an amazing relationship. We've been together for nine months. It's been great so far. The guy used to be really in really good shape, but he recently had an extreme weight gain, and his confidence has gone down the drain. He's super self-conscious, and it's affected our sex life. He doesn't want to try new things, sometimes won't even take his clothes off during sex. I don't know what to do. How can I let him know that looks really don't matter to me and that he's perfect just the way he is? Thank you, Monica. Actions. Actions what? No, because I no. got the same thing. I, get, I I feel like I'm you know, when I gain weight, which you know I feel a little bit heavy right now, and I don't feel like I'm very attractive at all. But it's, if the wife is like coming to me and saying you're totally, attra-, she doesn't have to say anything. She just comes to me, and I can, I can tell. Right. Okay. So, so that's actions speak a lot. So you think your 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 advice to Monica is just keep just go after him, like, yeah. Stick hitting on, make the first move, do all these like things. If you really are but attracted to him, you're way ahead of the curve, and he'll be able to feel that, and you just he, he can just sense it. If you're I, actually yeah. ca- kissing him and caressing him and doing whatever it is you do, right. whatever you want to do to him because you're attracted to him still, you can't. Yeah, you, sh- you might have really to make the that. move. Start. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but I was going to say, I mean, that's that's really good to hear, Anderson. That for you, even if you have these issues around like weight gain stuff, that would you? I wife. feel like fat dad, a bad right but now. You, you always know? feel fat. I gotta yeah. be honest. I've known you for like five years that's now. True. You, you you've never said I'm really feeling really svelte today. Uh-huh. So this has been your issue for a long time, and I want to say like she could. By, it's lucky that you're married, you're in a confident, secure place. They're in a nine-month relationship. So right. what I'm thinking is that there's probably a million different ways that she can let him know that she's sexy and she's turned on and she's attracted to him. And I like what you said about making the first move. But when you're feeling insecure and, 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 and fat and nothing fits you and you're not good about yourself, it doesn't always work. You say that as a woman, though, and I can say as a guy that's usually... You know, I no, you're this right. Up Maybe I'm not. The, you're in the right. Past. Like our on button is a lot more right. effective. Right, like I you think. just start, like you just unzip his pants, and he forget. Yeah, uh, most most guys, we're just we we are ready to go a little quicker than you. We warm up a, a lot faster than that's you true. guys. That's true. That's true. Right, you're right. Your frying pans, we are slow cookers. And I totally get it. And it's hard to it. shut that uh, un- so, engine down once it's on, right? Exactly. So you could just start. Maybe you just have to start making the moves, and that will help him feel more sexy and more confident. I'm concerned that he's just mm-hmm. he had such an extreme weight gain in nine months, and I'm wondering if he's depressed or if something else is going on. Yeah, in his life. that's a whole different issue. So well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe he has no sex drive either. But again, with men, you're right. It is different than in women in that regard, and that we don't get turned on as quickly if our mind is not on board. She just might have to come in and give him like a surprise, you know, the. Uh, yeah, impromptu blowjob right or for, something. Like drop to the knees thing type thing. Yeah. So, um, Which is always nice. Hey, the impromptu drop to the knees, ladies. Like If you'd want to do that every now and again, it's it's nice. It it's, is really nice, it's right? It's rare. We understand that. But it's nice when you do it every now and no, again. Exactly. The, uh, what do I call it? The the blowjob. The, uh, the spontaneous blowjob. The, the S- random P- acts of SBJ? spontaneous blowjobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that'd be Rass. great. So I think that's a good. 
I don't know. We need an acronym. Yes. Figure it out. I'm not good with math. Also, she could, yeah. uh, or, 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 or she could plant acronyms. some like chubby porn on her computer for him to find. So he's like, oh, she really is into this. That's a good one. I like the way not your bad. mind thinks. Yeah. yeah. No, but I think I think that's a good point. I think that, that like like many women, she's worried that he's going to be like, you're probably worried, Monica, that if you make the move, he might push you away. So that's all good advice, Anderson. I think um, being a man who's uh, fat, just kidding. <laughs> what, a, what a cunt. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, who's had weight gain? That was so mean. But yeah, you're yeah. so not fat. What yeah, you guys you... were all telling me how nice I look when, when I walk, walk in, so dude, I appreciate you're that. You're the least I'm fat. I'm sorry part. I called you the C word, but it was. You That's know. really aggressive. Well, <laughs> but do you know that. Calling cunt... me fat is my. Cunt. I have two things to say. You walked in. Yeah. I was at a jo- I know. That was really harsh because I, you know I think you're. Yeah, you walked I in. I'm like, you look hot. Thanks, first of all, it was thanks, the first thing it. I said to you. And to me, you've never looked like you've you've gone up any weight at all. I hide it well. And I don't even see you all the time. Big jackets. Okay, whatever. Thank You're you. super sexy and you look great, so I can call you fat as a joke. And cunt, let me tell you about that word. Oh, no. Do you know that cunt originally comes from the word, like, everything, like, like each Sanskrit times, like, mm-hmm. cunt, it was related to queen, and 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 a lot of ka, ka words are very, actually, powerful words. And calling mm-hmm. someone cunt is actually saying, like, you are, like, the goddess and okay. beautiful woman, and I think that you should nickname. take cunt back. Do it. No, you don't have to do it now, but. Well, didn't, it doesn't fuck mean, like, fornication under consent of king. Is there any kind of, uh. Is there any kind of reality to that? Has that been fact checked? I don't even know what that is. I don't know. Like for the about. longest time, like serfs couldn't have sex unless they got like a stamped approval from the king, and it and it said fornication under the consent of king. I don't know. We can look that up as well. I'm just telling Fuck. you, that cunt is a holy, holy word. Okay, holy word. I and, don't know how. Where um, did it go? Same with so pussy. Dirt. Because it's wrong. Sad. Well, it's so think of when you say it though. It's such an aggressive. But like, if it feels the Americans really good when like, they just, say it, but you just Australian, you're like, I can't believe you just called me that. It's like it takes you. Back. I use two syllables too. I said cut. But when the Australians or the, the Brits say it, it sounds like glorious. It, yeah, and I just I want I want to take it back. Okay, take it back. Really, get, um, we'll get you a, a bedazzled shirt where it says it in giant letters I'm across say the this, chest. So, um, let me just tell you, I want to say this correctly. <laughs> what did you say? I'll get you a shirt for Christmas and bedazzled, bedazzled uh, the, the C word. This cunt? I yes. want to bring it back in like a really good way. Get on that mic there, hon. I want to bring it back in a good way, but it's a vul- okay. It's known as a vulgar vulgar word mm-hmm. for female. Uh, Gentilia right, and also that. disparagement, but the earliest uh, known use of the word. Um, let's see where we go. I don't know if I'm going to find all this now, but I'm just telling you. Like, Cleopatra the, the, was a real the, the cunt, but I bet, I bet it was her. Of it is that um, I'm not going to find this. I'm just telling they you. They called her Cleopatra the cunt. I think that was actually her nickname for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting into it now. I'm okay. Keep going. But all right, I'm good. telling you that it, I'm going to take it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Do what you want. You know what? I think that you call me fat. P-H-A-T. I'm, I'm a I kid of the 90s, so I, thanks for the compliment. Let's go. Okay. Hi, Emily. I love your show. I need help. I'm happily married to a wonderful man, and we have two young kids. I spend most of my life taking care of my family, which I love, but I need something more. Hmm. I've always been bi-curious, but was not ready to pursue anything until with a woman until now. I made a friend on Tinder who's also in a straight relationship but is looking for a female friend that could possibly also be a sexual relationship. What? We have a date to meet uh, uh, next week. I'm looking forward to meeting her, but I'm afraid I don't know what to do slash talk about. Do I openly flirt, pay for dinner? If I feel a spark, do I try and kiss her? Ah, she wrote. She wrote that? Ah, yeah. I've been living my... (laughs) She did. Um, I've been living my whole adult life squelching my sexual attraction to women, and now I have this opportunity but don't know how to behave. This feels like high school over again. Thanks so much. Rocker Mom, 30, Minnesota. Rocker Mom? Why nothing about the blatant truth that you're cheating about to cheat on your husband? We don't know that he didn't consent to it. I asked that question, too, whenever this. I was like, ah. Total disregard for the kids. The family structure. Maybe the husband's cool with it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take the assumption that he he gave her permission to Weird have a time experience. to do this, though, right? Why? Because she's like married with kids. This is something you do when before you got the the kids and all well, that. Well, sometimes it doesn't go away. Let's just say her husband said yes. I'm giving this to women who are exploring their bisexuality. Okay, if not, let's get so that's what we're gonna take it from out. that. Okay. So I'm gonna assume that your husband's consenting of this endeavor. Okay. Be so, like a weird time for me to say, hey, you know what? I've never sucked a dick. I, I want to give it a shot. Right. It'll be a weird time when I just got a kid, I got the wife. You totally know? agree with you, but we're not going there right okay. now. But you, when All you right. do go there, I can't wait for you to let, let me know first. Okay. So let's tackle this one question at a time, okay? Uh, should you flirt? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You should flirt with her. Like, if you're into this woman, you got to flirt. Because here's the thing. When you're, like, with women, most of my friends, majority, it's not sexual, right? right. We're, like, talking about everything, but it is a little different. This is going to be new for you. I've distinguished it. that it's not like a girlfriend. You're not getting your nails done. You're, like... I'm attracted to you, right. like, together. Like, 
not getting your nails done together, going shopping. Right. But this is kind of a date. Um, or if you're getting your nails done, you're talking about how good it's going to feel because your nails are all smooth now. And they're going to be inside feel great on the vulva. Exactly. Yeah. And she'll know that you have nice trimmed cuticles and yes. nails. Um, and I don't think that women like are going to be as judgmental of you as making these moves that you have to have all these like right things and there's going to be some kind of protocol. Now, she's in the same exact boat you right. are. So I think you guys, being women like we are, like you'll probably even talk. I bet you'll become this meta kind of like... This is kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, wasn't sure what to do. I was nervous. I was nervous, too. It's supposed to be uncomfortable, and there's supposed to be a bunch of hiccups here. You guys yeah. are both anticipating them and uh, exactly. go with them. That's going to be part of the experience. Right. So just like really you just know that you're going to be vulnerable. you got to be open. It might be a little uncomfortable. Um, should you pay? There are no rules here. Just like when I go out on a date with a guy, I always pull. I do the, I do the reach. Do you do the reach? I do the reach every time. At least time. you give the, the, the satisfaction of the reach. I do. I feel like I always got it like, and by reach, I don't mean I reached out his pants. No, no, no. She reaches. For I reached my wallet for her card. Yes. Yeah, and usually, you know, they're like, no, Here's no the I joke, got it. Though. So she doesn't even bring her wallet. She's just reaching towards I just her purse. Reached. Yeah, exactly. When I was broke, I just yeah. didn't bring my wallet, and I reached, <laughs> and that was fine. No one ever complained. And it's um, so uncomfortable. That it, oh, really? Are you sure? Okay, okay, no, but really, okay. Yeah. That's exactly and in your it. head, you're thinking, That's I'm exactly so broke, like, please pick it up, please. Yeah, 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 totally. Oh, my God. This credit card actually won't go through, but you can give it to the waitress. Give it a shot. Like. I got a couple others that we can try, too. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, I think that, you know, eye contact, flirting, smiles, she's new at it as well. You're going to be fine. Should you pay? Oh, again, reach for the, do the reach. See what happens. Maybe you'll both split Trade it. off. I don't know what's going to happen at your first date. Somebody gets the food, you get the drinks later. Yeah. And you'll know, just like you know when you were dating men, if there's a kiss, if there's a vibe and you want to kiss her. And here's the other thing. Since it's new for both of you, nothing might happen on this date. Like, just like a lot of dates I go out with guys that we don't kiss on the first date. Like, I said date with a guy we did not kiss on the first date. Second date, we did. A little bit more. That's a story it's for next Enrique. week. Not Enrique. Not Enrique. Enrique, you banged no. on the first date, yes. It wasn't really a date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless you call us the massage date. But anyway, so um, I, I would just, um, I understand why you're nervous, but I think you're going to know what to do when you are there. Especially because she's in the same boat. And just don't stress about it and have fun, be present, be in the moment. And if you're Enjoy shy. And let me know what happens. I kind of want to, I really want to know. If you're shy or nervous or a little bit uncomfortable and, and not sure, that, that's actually very attractive to a lot of people. Yeah. It's kind of cute. It is cute. It's yeah. so that you're vulnerable and you're real. Don't try to be something that you're not. Yeah, don't try and go in there with a swagger like, I've been eating blocks for years. Let's do this. You know what I mean? Eating blocks. Box. 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 So yes. They said blocks. Nope. I'm like, is that a new slang? I don't know that. Yeah. I think, th- I think this is happening more and more. Yeah. But again, you know, I'm sure your husband's down with it. So let's move on. And then go home and uh, take care of your kids. Exactly. And how much better that will be, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Mommy's breast smells like fish. Oh, I'm dude. Sorry. I'm sorry, but that might happen. It might happen. It might not. It that was very locker room so talk. I apologize. Bad. What's happening I'm in this show? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Jesus. A small segment of your audience enjoyed that. Part of mo- most of them probably didn't. I'm sorry. I'm offended. Okay. Well, um, it comes with being a cunt. Because they very sushi. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I we got to wrap this guy up, right? Yeah. yeah, we do. This was awesome. Tell me that's fake, the furry word. Um, yep. Okay, because it would be weird to have a leopard on you. <laughs> It's not a real leopard. Okay, it's good. actually, I don't want to talk about it. It's leopard. <laughs> it would be weird that I had a leopard. <laughs> Enrique killed it for Enrique me. Enrique onto for this me. leopard for me. It was so romantic. Aw, good to see you. Okay, everyone. So here's the deal. I just love you all. Remember, follow us everywhere across the board. Uh, we're doing a lot of fun stuff on Instagram, Instagram stories, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. It's all at Sex with Emily across the board. Anderson, what's up with your crazy world these days? Oh, I'm, I'm very, very crazy, very busy. I'm doing my other shows as usual. Uh, Film Vault. We're actually we're doing uh, Nocturnal Animals oh, 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 this oh. week or last week. Nocturnal, with we, it. J- uh, I almost called you Jillian. Uh, That's Emily sweet. and I both. Because you call uh, her cunt as well? No. <laughs> she calls me that. Uh, talking about my wife there. But no, Emily and, both, uh, and I both saw Nocturnal Animals, so uh, we both really liked it. I will be talking about that one on the Film Vault. Cinematics is a show where we're, we just did La La podcasts. Land. Podcasts. These are yeah, all podcasts. We, we do. Uh, I want to see that too. La La Land. You got you guys. You girls are both gonna really like La La Land. We uh, discuss movies b- a, a couple days before they come out. Give you a heads up, and then of course the after disaster with Mike Carano and Tyler White. Also, uh, AndersonCowan uh, If you're interested in getting one of my obnoxious CCP shirts, Cold Cockle Production shirts, or uh, donating to the cause, uh, or getting the shorts, uh, all ten short, nine shorts that I uh, directed over the years. Uh, it all goes towards making groupers, which was a very successful campaign. Have I done a? I've done a show with Dude, you since we were successful. I right? think so. Yeah, but you killed it. We were reaching so for seventy-five thousand. We raised eighty-five thousand, and nice. I can't wait to make my 
my bullying I'm so movie. Proud of you. Oh, it's, it's gonna amazing. be so much fun. It's amazing. Congratulations. Go, oh, yeah, support Anderson Cowan. Um, and uh, thank you for supporting the show. I love you all. And thank you to producer Madison, Lori, Jamie, Eddie, Ken, my amazing team. And uh, just thank you all for listening. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback is such a I've got the solution to a problem that more than 30 million women encounter in their life. I bet you know what it is. You've probably experienced it yourself. I know I have, and I know at least some of you have because you email me about it all the time. Yep, it's your ever-changing libido. Did you guess it? Not too long ago, I introduced you to Fiera, a brand new consumer device designed by a team of medical professionals to help women concerned with changes in libido or sexual arousal. The makers of the product asked me to try it for myself and experience its natural approach to sparking arousal, which I did, but we'll get to that in a second. The first thing you should know, Fiera is a -a one-of-a-kind product that gently stimulates the clitoris with mild suction. It's not a vibrator or pleasure product, so it's not made to bring you to orgasm. It just gets you warmed up for intimacy with a partner or for solo play. You simply position it over your clitoris, and the mild suction holds it in place using a soft silicone seal. After a few minutes, the pressure begins to enhance blood flow, a major factor needed to turn you on physically and mentally. This product really works. I mean, it's been studied and tested more than any other consumer product I know of. 89% of women in their study reported to be in the mood after using Fear regularly. 93% felt they were excited and ready for sex, and a whopping 96% said they were looking forward to being intimate again. How do you like those numbers? Based on my own experience, I can tell you that the study results don't lie. I felt the same way. I've definitely noticed a spark in my arousal since I've been using it. But like a good exercise routine, you have to give it a chance to feel the results. I recommend you use it at least four times in the first month to really feel the benefit. Fiera is perfect for women who are looking to increase their sexual arousal without drugs or hormone therapy. It's safe, easy to use, and for a limited time, Sex with Emily listeners can save $50 on a Fiera of their own. To order, click on the Fiera banner on my website or visit Fiera.com. That's F-I-E-R-A.com and enter code SWE2016 at checkout. This discount is only good until December 31st, so don't wait. So back in August, our friends at Vibratech sent me a new toy to try out, which you know is one of the best perks of my job. However, it can also be challenging because let's be honest, not all toys are created equal. Well, thank God I loved it. You may remember Vibratech's Mystic Wand, my favorite compact massage wand. Well, I'm thrilled to tell you that it's now available in a rechargeable version. The Mystic Wand Rechargeable is truly the perfect evolution of the compact massager. Of course, it has the same soft round head that you love for external stimulation, but that's where the similarities end. The Mystic's curved handle is super comfortable and makes it so easy to get into just the right spot. And Vibratex added three vibration patterns and three power levels, making the Mystic Wand Rechargeable one of the most versatile compacts around. We've been so excited to tell you about the Mystic Wand Rechargeable, and now that it's finally here, I want you all to check it out. If you go to the video tab on my site, you'll see a clip of me checking it out for the first time. My team has also had the chance to try it for themselves, and it was unanimous. They all loved it. The Vibrotex Mystic Wand Rechargeable is available now. You can learn more at vibrotex.com or by clicking on the Mystic Wand banner on my site.